Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on numerical methods for solving governing equations. So, in the last lectures we uh, talked about uh, the different governing equations of fluid flow and heat transfer and uh, now uh, we should uh, go towards the modeling aspect especially the numerical modeling uh, which is normally carried out uh, in the case of Tundish modeling. So, what are the, the uh, typical numerical methods which are used uh, for solving those governing equations because we need to solve these governing equations uh, to find the uh, you know distribution of the variables like uh, pressure, velocity or uh, temperature and uh, many more uh, at the different points in the domain. So, for that uh, there are uh, different methods which are being adopted and among them we will uh, typically talk about uh, one of the method that is finite volume method, but uh, we will have uh, certainly uh, some idea about the uh, other methods. So, uh, let us uh, talk about the numerical methods or numerical analysis uh, when we talk. It is the study of algorithms uh, that uses uh, numerical approximation for the problems of mathematical analysis. So, as we know that uh, we are uh, normally getting uh, the uh, problems uh, you know expressed in the form of mathematical expressions and now these expressions uh, you know need to be uh, solved. So, you have to approximate it numerically and uh, there are uh, basically three deep types of different approaches which are uh, most commonly used and they are finite difference method finite volume method and finite element method. Uh, out of that normally we use for the fluid flow and heat transfer applications, uh, we uh, use the finite volume method especially in the, uh, in the domain of CFD that is computational fluid dynamics and uh, even uh, heat transfer. So, the finite difference method which was uh, the first method which was uh, you know uh, devised that was uh, uh, you know that is uh, still used, but then finite volume method has many advantages. Uh, when we typically uh, go for solving these uh, fluid dynamics uh, um, related problems, so and, and then finite element is also used typically. Uh, you know when you have the struct uh, structural problems or uh, related to deformations and all that. So, in those cases in the case of metal forming or so typically they are used these finite element methods, but not necessarily you can say that always only finite element methods should be used only on those areas you can use even in the area of uh, uh, fluid mechanics and heat transfer also. So, the major advantage of the numerical analysis is that a numerical value can be obtained even when the problem has no analytical solution. So, the thing is that in uh, many cases we are not likely to have the analytical solution and in those cases we have to rely uh, you know we have to go for the numerical uh, you know approximation uh, and that is why the numerical analysis is uh, being uh, carried out. So, the uh, finite difference methods uh, these are the numerical methods for approximating the solutions to differential equations using finite difference equations uh, to approximate derivatives via truncated Taylor series. So, basically uh, what is required is that uh, most of the uh, these equations where you see these uh, uh, derivatives are there or there are the, the uh, differential equations and we need to have the solution of these uh, differential equations. So, you have derivatives and in the uh, in the, the derivatives you know uh, we are approximating these uh, uh, derivatives via the uh, truncated Taylor series. So, you have a Taylor series expansion and in that uh, we truncate it we uh, try to ignore certain terms to find the uh, 
uh, expression for the uh, derivative. Uh, in terms of the uh, neighboring uh, you know uh, points and accordingly uh, you know you get uh, uh, the uh, algebraic equation which is to be uh, solved. So, these finite difference approximations are algebraic in form and the solutions are related to grid points. So, what happens that uh, suppose you want to go for this point. So, uh, so if you have to find you know uh, the uh, derivative. So, derivative at this point suppose if you have to find so it may be this point minus the value at this point minus this point divided by the whole uh, distance or maybe uh, you know if you want to have the derivative. So, in this domain it will be uh, at with this value minus at this value divided by this domain. So, uh, like that uh, if you go for uh, the derivative with respect to the uh, you know in this direction. So, there you have uh, the points are these two uh, you know the values are these two points and taken the distance between them as delta y. So, accordingly you know you get uh, you know these uh, differential equations in uh, you are converting it into the uh, algebraic equations and then they are solved. So, the finite difference method will be involving uh, three steps. Uh, first is that you divide the domain into a set of grids of nodes. So, you have uh, a domain. So, you will be uh, you know dividing it in the form of nodes then uh, you are approximating the given differential equation uh, by finite difference uh, equivalence uh, that relates the solution to the uh, grid point. So, you will have uh, you know the uh, grid points in the in their form you will be approximating those equations uh, using the finite difference uh, equivalence and then you are solving these um, uh, difference equations. So, that will be subjected to the um, prescribed boundary conditions or and or the initial conditions. So, once you have the uh, equations at the different points uh, uh, you know not points basically for every node you will have the equation and then uh, you will have also the uh, conditions at the uh, as the in, in the form of initial conditions or the boundary conditions which are there at the boundaries. So, then they are solved. So, uh, normally you go for uh, uh, we used uh, uh, to solve uh, you, you might have done uh, hopefully the solution of the steady state heat transfer in one dimensional using the finite difference you can uh, do it. So, as we were talking about so uh, that emanates from uh, this Taylor series and that is truncated Taylor series. So, as you know that this is the Taylor series f x plus minus d x will be f x plus uh, d x into f prime x something like that. So, d x square upon 2 f factorial. So, like that it will go. So, uh, you know if you have to find the f prime x and if you uh, you know uh, remove these uh, terms if you are trying to uh, you know neglect these terms. So, so d x will be divided. So, d x will be divided by for whole the terms. So, this will be of uh, d x order. So, that way uh, it will be of order d x. So, the error is uh, or the order of d x. So, you are uh, uh, further you are uh, neglecting. So, that way you get the f prime x uh, uh, value and uh, that is uh, being uh, you know expressed in terms of fun the function value at x plus d x and f x and d x is the distance between the two uh, points that is x plus d x and, and the x. So, this is uh, being used uh, you know uh, for that approximation and that you are getting one uh, linear algebraic uh, you know uh, equation and that you will be getting at all the nodes and then you can solve it. Now, uh, the, the important method which is normally used for the uh, CFD calculations will be the uh, you know finite volume method. Now, in the finite volume method what is uh, done is that uh, uh, this uh, here the domain will be uh, converted into the uh, control volumes and uh, there will be integration over the uh, you know uh, control volume. So, integral conservation will be satisfied over the exact maybe you know uh, over the all the uh, exactly over the control volume. So, basically it is keeping that physics also into mind 
and uh, your, so it will be uh, and in this case you apply the uh, divergence theorem because you will have so you are integrating over the uh, whole control volume so you will have uh, the divergence theorem applied so that you are getting another equation for the uh, further and then uh, you use the uh, you know different type of discretization uh, uh, you know rules and uh, these uh, rules basically uh, will uh, help you to get the equations in the uh, algebraic form which is solved. So, the, uh, to evaluate these derivatives uh, derivative terms uh, what is done is that values at the control volume faces are needed. So, uh, you have to make an assumption that how the value is varying. So, basically uh, you know you have the control volume in that you have the node at the center of the control volume you have the uh, you know control volume faces. So, uh, you know when you need to uh, have the values at the control volume faces you will have to make uh, the assumption that how the value is varying. So, you will have the uh, values at the nodes so in their uh, term you have to take the value at the nodes. So, for that you will have the different uh, rules that we will discuss and uh, this way so that uh, there may be uh, you know the, there are discretization schemes are there and then uh, the, the result is that we try to uh, you know have a, a set of linear algebraic equations and uh, that is uh, one for each control volume. So, whatever be the number of volumes you will have that uh, number of linear algebraic equations and uh, then you are solving these equations iteratively uh, in most of the cases and uh, you get the uh, values uh, you know uh, at the different uh, you know points of interest. Now, the advantage of uh, finite volume method is that the, the integral conservation is satisfied exactly over the uh, control volume. So, in those cases what you see that your uh, you know conservation is, uh, uh, is satisfied over the uh, control volume. So, as you see this is uh, this is a typical uh, control volume these are the, the nodes the computational nodes and uh, this is the you know uh, as you see this is the uh, boundary. So, you know and these are the you know uh, so you will once you find the control volumes and you will have uh, uh, so this is typically a control volume and this is the node as the boundaries this is boundary nodes. So, basically uh, you, you use the boundary conditions and then accordingly you will have uh, the equations at, at these points also. So, they will be helpful in um, uh, solving the equation. So, you will have uh, this is uh, your solution domain which is uh, subdivided into number of uh, you know uh, small control volumes then the grid defines the boundaries of the control volume computational node will be lying at the center of the control volume and, and all this that we have already seen. Now, uh, what we see that uh, uh, how we have to know that how this control volume method works. So, uh, because uh, when we are taking a domain in, in, in most of the cases we will be solving the problem uh, in 2D or 3D, but just for understanding we will start with uh, one dimensional problem and also the two dimensional problem. So, suppose we start with a simple problem of uh, uh, pure diffusion problem. So, if you look at a pure diffusion problem uh, and if you do the one dimensional steady state diffusion. So, in that case uh, uh, you know there is no uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, time derivative term and uh, you have the uh, one dimensional steady state diffusion uh, equation can be d by d x of tau of uh, do phi by do x uh, plus s will be equal to uh, you know 0. So, that is the uh, one dimensional steady state diffusion uh, you know if, the, if that is of uh, two dimensional you will have x and y both will be uh, coming into picture. Now, what we do you know uh, in these cases uh, uh, as you see first of all you have the domain. So, you are uh, having the uh, formation of control volumes. So, once you take these nodes now uh, surrounding these nodes you are finding the uh, control volumes. So, as you see you are uh, you are having so this way you will have 
the uh, control volume at, at this point. Similarly, you will have one control volume at uh, this point. So, that way uh, you can have these different uh, you know uh, control volumes. As you see the on this side and this side, so you will have certain uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, conditions will be there. Suppose, phi is we have you are do going for the heat uh, um, and conduction equation or so. So, phi will be nothing but the temperature. So, temperature values may be given at uh, this point and uh, this point. So, these are the boundary conditions. So, that will be uh, you know the, those conditions at boundaries they will be taken into account and then accordingly you will have the uh, equations formed. So, what we do is initially uh, we go for the uh, uh, grid generation and uh, as you see that if you take any point P. So, what happens on the uh, so on the this is the control volume. So, what you see this is the east uh, face of the control volume this is the west face of the control volume and this is the uh, grid node P and similarly you will have these uh, uh, distances. So, they will be uh, represented by delta x uh, uh, w e so west to uh, east surface the small will be that uh, surface uh, you know denoted denoting the surface. Similarly, this will be delta x p and this is delta x w p. So, these are the distances and this will be again the distance between the nodes uh, p and the uh, east node and, and similarly the between E p and the west node it will be delta x uh, capital W p. So, uh, you make these uh, you know uh, grids and uh, normally we uh, the, the practice is that we make these uh, you know uh, control volumes near the uh, edge of the domain in such a manner that the uh, physical uh, boundaries uh, should be matching with the control volume boundaries that is what you see that here also if you make these boundaries. So, the control volume boundary will be making you know coming in uh, you know here in the same line with this uh, surface boundary. Uh, now, uh, after uh, doing that what we do is uh, we do the uh, discretization and uh, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, equation. So, what we see that we get uh, once you do the discretization you get the equation in this form. Now, how we get uh, the, the uh, equations in this form. So, what we have seen we saw that you have uh, d by uh, d x of tau uh, you know d phi by d x uh, plus s it will be equal to 0. So, this is your uh, uh, equation. Now, uh, if you uh, go for the uh, integration of uh, over the control volume. So, what you do is you are doing the integrations you do, uh, do the integration over the uh, control volume that is delta v and it will be d by d x of uh, tau d phi by d x and uh, plus again. Uh, so, this will be d v and then again you have uh, s d v. So, that will be also for the uh, volume you are doing the volume integration. Now, uh, what happens that uh, if you do that so using that uh, theorem you can write uh, you know as uh, so this will may be written as uh, tau a d phi by d x and uh, uh, similarly you will have uh, so uh, and, and then you this also you will have uh, s d v. So, this will be for the uh, area and, and then you have s delta v. So, so this way you, uh, you know that will be equal to 0. So, this will be 0 that uh, seems to be you know uh, accordingly you will have. Uh, so, uh, what happens uh, you know uh, now if you integrate. So, first of all you will have the area term coming into picture and then uh, since it is integration. So, you will have uh, the uh, uh, the value at the uh, east face and uh, then value at the west face. So, you will have uh, basically this as del delta v term will be coming later and uh, here you will have E minus again you will have uh, the term tau a d phi by d x and that will be at the west face. And uh, then you will have the term s delta v will be uh, equal to 0. So, that way uh, you are uh, uh, getting these uh, values. Uh, so, you are converting them uh, you know using the divergence theorem. 
Now, the thing is that uh, you are getting these values uh, at uh, the nodes and uh, you need to have these values at the uh, these faces or the uh, and the face of the, the control volume boundaries. So, you will have to uh, basically uh, do certain kind of differencing and if you use the center differencing for this uh, tau term. So, you will have to define the tau term at E if you uh, look at the you know uh, this uh, uh, this point. Uh, so, you will have the point uh, E here and if you have to have the value of tau at uh, E. So, you can have it uh, you know uh, as the average of using central differencing approach you can have the average of at, at this point plus uh, the uh, plus uh, this point. So, you can have the uh, you know uh, this value uh, that will be uh, interpolating linearly interpolating we can have uh, this value. So, tau e we can have the uh, tau w plus uh, uh, you know tau e will be tau uh, capital E plus tau P by 2 and similarly tau W that is at the face will be tau uh, W plus tau P by 2. So, uh, your uh, diffusive fluxes uh, what we have seen tau A of d phi by uh, d x. So, you know your uh, you know uh, tau uh, A d phi by d x at the stern face it will be uh, you know uh, you know tau uh, so so that is what uh, it will be tau e so it will be tau e plus uh, uh, tau p uh, by 2 that you can take it otherwise you uh, take these uh, uh, values at the uh, face itself so you can have the uh, tau e a e and then uh, you can have the d phi by d x. So, uh, d phi by d x will be for the stern phase it will be phi e minus phi p divided by uh, delta x. So, that will be p e. Similarly, uh, tau uh, uh, tau a uh, d phi by d x at the west phase it will be tau w a w and then uh, you will have uh, uh, phi p minus phi w and then divided by uh, delta x w p. So, uh, and also uh, what we do that uh, for uh, the, uh, the source term what we do is uh, we uh, linearize it. So, once we linearize it will be s will be. Uh, so, what we do for the for source term So, uh, the, it will be linearized and uh, that we uh, represent as this S delta V. So, if you take the S bar delta V, if we uh, take it as the you know uh, one is S u and then you will have S p phi p. So, we are linearizing this uh, source term. So, that the term which is uh, you know uh, when we are doing for uh, the uh, you know getting the equation in terms of phi p so at that time this will go on that side. So, uh, what we see if you try to uh, give these values in that particular equation. So, in that uh, that case you are uh, getting you know uh, this uh, uh, value. So, what we get is that uh, this will be tau e by delta x p e a e plus uh, tau w by delta x w p into a w minus s p into phi p that will be tau w by delta x w p into a w phi w plus tau e by delta x p a e phi e plus s u. What you see? So, that can be you know that that you can get if you uh, go further. So, uh, so that will be uh, you know uh, once you uh, do that. So, you will have uh, so that uh, that can be even understood by writing these equations. So, what you got is tau e a e and you have the uh, you know uh, d phi by uh, d x. So, that is at e. So, it will be phi e minus phi p. So, you will have phi e minus phi p divided by delta x that is your p e and similarly you will have tau w a w and then you have d phi by d x. So, that will be phi p minus phi w 
divided by uh, delta x and that will be uh, you know w p or p w. So, you can uh, write and then uh, so, so that will be uh, and then plus s u plus uh, you know s p phi p. So, that will be equal to 0. What you see is that now this equation can be written uh, you know what you see that you have phi p and you have uh, phi e and phi w and there is one source term s u. So, uh, uh, if you rearrange these terms and take the um, equation you get uh, that equation in terms of phi p multiplied by some um, something will be equal to uh, some uh, constant multiplied by um, phi e plus uh, you know some constant multiplied by phi w plus s u will come here. So, that we will write as a p. So, and then uh, we uh, write as a e then a w and then you have the uh, source term. So, that is what you are getting and a p will be. So, that is what uh, you know this uh, same th equation you are getting. So, this will be uh, phi e by delta x p a e. So, that way you know now getting the phi e whether how should you get it you can have in, in general you can get the uh, that phi e value as the uh, average of the uh, value at uh, towards the uh, at the east and also at the uh, p node. So, that way you can get in, in simple terms, but uh, you know that also may be taken uh, uh, differently uh, and that um, we will uh, study later on that how it is done. So, what we see is that in this case you are getting uh, just such kind of equation and this equation uh, you will be getting uh, you know uh, uh, at uh, for all the control volumes and uh, then uh, they are uh, solved and uh, you get the uh, value at uh, the nodes. So, this is how you know uh, your uh, equations are uh, solved in this case. Similarly, I mean uh, uh, we can uh, uh, go for uh, the. So, what we see normally in the finite volume method you have the uh, discretized equation which is must be set at each of the nodal points in order to solve the uh, problem you know you we got the equations for the control volume and also we will have the equations for the uh, you know at the uh, boundaries. So, you will have uh, uh, certain uh, boundary conditions will also lead to uh, some set of equations and accordingly you will be solving them. So, uh, your uh, discretized equations are set up uh, at the nodal points and which are adjacent to the domain boundaries uh, those volumes the discretized equation is modified to incorporate the boundary condition. So, what happens that at the boundaries you will have to uh, modify uh, you know uh, that equation because that uh, condition needs to be satisfied. So, you will have uh, the uh, incorporation of the uh, boundary conditions and then uh, the equation uh, resulting system of equation is uh, solved to obtain the distribution of property phi at all the nodal points. Now, uh, if you so this they, that was done for the uh, one dimensional and what we saw in the one dimensional uh, uh, flow you have the control volume and you have one uh, node uh, towards the east and one node towards the west and so they at, at this particular point uh, you know you are getting the value at this point expressed in terms of the point at this and point at uh, you know the value at this point as well as at this point neighboring two points and then you are solving them. Now, uh, that was a simple one dimensional case similar can be extended for the two dimensional cases. So, when you have two dimensional diffusional problems, so it will be del do by do x of tau do phi by do x plus do by do y of tau do phi by do y plus s phi will be 0. So, what happens here uh, you will have the control volume and you will have the faces towards the north and also all towards the south. So, uh, so, what happens that in this case you get the, uh, the value at the uh, uh, p point it will be in expressed in terms of west east plus south plus north and then plus the uh, source term. So, same uh, in the same way you will have the equation coming in this form and this equation will be uh, you know. So, you get these equations at all the nodes you will be getting uh, those equations and these equations are solved 
and you are getting. So, same thing applies for even the uh, you know uh, three dimensional uh, problems where you have top and bottom also. So, you will have the six terms plus the source term will be coming and that needs to be solved using uh, the proper algorithm. So, uh, there are many algorithms for solving these set of uh, linear equations in those cases. So, uh, this is uh, you know uh, about the finite difference and finite volume method typically. Uh, there are methods like finite element also, but we will be talking more about the finite volume methods in our study uh, in the coming lectures. Thank you very much.